The two extremes of Apple's laptop lineup, the very big and very powerful M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 and the demure, very small MacBook Air. Each of these is my favorite MacBook in their own way, but today when I talk about when compared against each other, which would I recommend and to whom would I recommend it to? So for whom does the laptop bell toll? That didn't make any sense. Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. These two computers are at the polar opposite end of Apple's lineup, from a physical standpoint, from a price standpoint, and absolutely from a power standpoint. But before we just say, hey, the biggest, most expensive one is the winner, I think we can have a more nuanced conversation that can be had laying out what someone might need at different price levels. Yes, the MacBook Pro 14 also exists, and while it is also a great computer, pfft, this isn't about being reasonable. This is about smashing the most expensive and least expensive MacBooks together and see what falls out. We skipped this in the last couple of videos, but because of the sheer differences between the two, I do want to quickly cover the specs and ordering information for both computers to really hammer home just how different they are. The M1 MacBook Air can be had for around $1,000 retail, or since we're in the holiday shopping season when this video goes live, you can get it for $899 brand new most places. And even if you are watching outside of the holiday season, you can get one one of these furbished for $849 from Apple. For that base model price, you'll get the 8-core M1 processor, 7-core GPU, 8 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. I bet you, I don't even need the script for this anymore, I have these specs memorized at this point. You can add a little bit here and there by going up to an 8-core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 2 terabyte solid state drive, but the more money you put into the MacBook Air, I feel like the less you actually get out of it. Diminishing returns hits really hard here when something like that that MacBook Pro 14 lurks just around the corner. On the M1 MacBook Pro 16, even the quote unquote cheapest base model machine will cost you $24.99 or almost three times more expensive than the MacBook Air's base model. And more expensive than any version of the MacBook Air you can get unless you end up buying two MacBook Airs. For its steep price tag, you'll get the 10-core M1 Pro processor, 16-core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. That's... Yeah, that's a lot of power. But in for a penny, in for a pound, am I right? The version of the MacBook Pro 16 that I've got, or we might call it for the rest of the video, the MacBook Pro 16, yes, I am the only person on the entire internet to make that joke today. This has the M1 Max 10 core processor, 32 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, and a one terabyte solid state drive. This computer costs so much, it hurts me to say, and I'll only like meekly put it over the screen right now so as not to upset my injured wallet. My wallet might come punch me in the face for how much I've been spending on laptops, so we're just going to meekly put it on the screen. Undoubtedly, any version of the MacBook Pro 16 is more powerful than any version of the MacBook Air. There is no universe, at least there is no universe in this particular timeline, where the more little air can overcome the mountain that is the computer. Heck, I think I can feel the desk right now tipping a little bit from the sheer magnitude of this laptop. But maybe, when we start the comparison, overwhelming power is not all it's cracked up to be. Let's dig into this comparison by comparing these against my famous, infamous, well, that thing I do with price, portability, and performance categories. What's probably the most complicated of the categories to get into today is portability. And I get it, you might be sitting to yourself over there scratching your head saying, Gary, uh, why is this complicated? The MacBook Air could hide inside of the MacBook Pro 16. Surely it's the more portable, Gary making YouTube videos. Well, yes, me. It is an incredibly small laptop, but I don't always equate small necessarily as portable. If a computer is small but needs a whole host of accessories or things to make it work, well, then it's not really portable now, is it? So counterintuitively, there are a few things that make the MacBook Pro 16 more portable than the MacBook Air, despite the size difference. You don't really need a dongle of almost any kind professionally when using the 16. And when I say professionally, I'm talking as a professional office worker, maybe a video producer, but the term pro is so wide. Either way, in my day job, I only need this MacBook. That HDMI port is clutch for me to be able to present my strategies to clients or my team's bosses wherever I am. I absolutely will need a dongle to do the same thing with the MacBook Air, and yes, because of the price difference, I can buy a ton of dongles, and we'll get more into the price in a little bit, but you can't really put a price tag on peace of mind. I mean, I guess you can. I think you can put a price tag on anything these days, 
but I'm personally willing to pay extra and I'm willing to pay a lot extra for a safety portability blanket. Though back in like reality, right? The MacBook Air is incredibly small and weighs almost nothing. Carrying this computer around is pure joy because of how lightweight it actually is. Plus you will get all of the things that we'll talk about later in the performance category from a computer that weighs less than some of my keyboards. Something that both computers get really right for portability though is battery life. Holy cow, the battery life on these two machines is legendary. It's that orange colored gear, legendary. The MacBook Pro 16 gets roughly 21 hours of life, while the MacBook Air gets 17 hours of battery life. These are two of the best that you'll ever find, and a huge part of portability for me is not needing to bring along a charging brick or cables or other such nonsense. Because it's never as simple as just the brick. Every other single thing you need will be need to be carried in some way. The M1 MacBooks have the absolute best battery life, period. Look, team, these are my two favorite laptops ever made. If you were looking for me to absolutely trash either of these, I'm not sure that you understand my channel all that much, so welcome if you're new. Okay, moving on to performance, here's an avenue where it's a little more straightforward. Objectively speaking, the MacBook Pro 16 is far more powerful than the MacBook Air in multi-core performance. Look, it's on a bar chart. Team, you cannot argue with bar charts in a YouTube tech video. But if you were looking for single core tasks, like browsing the web, using single productivity apps at a time, like normal people stuff, not having 100 tabs open in Chrome, or having 100 Excel sheets up for a benchmark, in single core tasks, it's a whole lot closer than you might think. And that's mainly because the M1 and the M1 Max are built off of the same underlying system. The Max just has more of that system, which is why it absolutely dominates the multi-threaded tasks like video editing or those bigger tasks we already talked about. But you really need to need that power to get the most out of it. And this isn't new, right? This is absolutely the biggest point about the new MacBooks in general. Yes, they are very powerful, but the M1 standard is also very powerful compared to all of the Intel Macs that were priced at under what, like $7,000? My M1 Mac Mini is a far better computer than my iMac Pro was, and that Mac Mini still costs half of what even the base model MacBook Pro 16 costs. I know that the YouTuber's job, and this isn't a job of mine, this is a hobby, but the overall effect of these videos is to give out solid overarching recommendations to everyone. But here, you have to do a little homework yourself. You need to know what kind of power that you really need and know if one of these processors and increased memory options are for you. If not, you're kind of wasting money, which if that's your thing, great but I don't really want to recommend that you waste your money. However, there are a few other performance things that I will absolutely give to the MacBook Pro 16 with very little of that, but you need to pick whatever you need, kind of waffling from earlier. The display on the new MacBooks is stunning, and I don't mean that in a hyperbolic way. I mean the first time I saw this, I was stunned at how good it looks. It'll refresh faster, it'll be brighter, it will have much better contrast ratio, this monitor will be gorgeous, and everything you do on the MacBook Pro 16 will feel like it's faster, whether the processor is actually moving faster at any given moment because of that faster refresh rate. Plus, the MacBook Pro 16 has much better external support display options than the MacBook Air, well, any of the M1 standard Macs. Meaning that if you do wanna use this as both a travel laptop, but also as a desktop replacement, this will do far more for you than the MacBook Air. And I can't give you some kind of warped logic around that. I love it. And combined with the lack of ports, those two things are easily the biggest weakness about the MacBook Air. But you knew that already because I've been complaining about that for a literal year at this point. And the cool thing about both is that neither has a touch bar. Score one for the awesome team. Lastly, let's talk price. Whereas power was the domain of the big book, price is obviously the domain for the cheaper book, the smaller book the MacBook. But when I say price here, I don't exactly just mean the literal number on the screen when you buy it, I mean value. And I do think the MacBook Air is the better value machine because you get so much power, so much battery life, so much everything, and it doesn't really cost all that much. I think you'd still be, one year later, I think you'd still be hard pressed to find another laptop or any computer that gives you the sort of capabilities that the MacBook Air gives you for the same price. Yes, there are cheaper Windows computers out there, but they'll be much worse off for battery, they'll have less power when running off that battery, they'll be far louder with their fans, and they'll have a far less robust build quality. That's not to say the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 doesn't have value, it does, and again, I love mine, but if I wasn't a YouTuber that was always gonna buy this machine anyway, I mean, I gotta make content, team. If I wasn't gonna buy this, I don't know that this would be a valuable addition to the team for me. Yes, we already saw the absurd numbers that this thing puts up, but practically, all I'm really paying for here are the ports and saving myself a few minutes a day. Sure, that adds up over time, but the return on that time investment for me 
isn't actually real because I use that time to do other things at the same time. And those other tasks will still need to get done and they still take the same amount of time. So the power of this machine is almost kind of wasted on me. Where with the MacBook Air, I'm still getting those ancillary tasks done after the main power task is done anyway. So long story long, value and price aren't necessarily the same thing. And I absolutely believe that the M1 MacBook Air to have the far higher value in this comparison. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Look, I'm not trying to be a contrarian here just to score some YouTube views. I do. I love both of these computers. These are, without a doubt, my two favorite computers made in the last two years. But when it comes right down to it, unless you need the overwhelming power of the M1 Max, I still think the MacBook Air and its much lower price tag makes the better recommendation. Despite making these videos, I don't know that I really qualify as a power user. When I make these videos, I try to stick with what I know because benchmarks don't really tell you how a computer works day to day. So I don't do things like run a coding benchmark and say, wow, this is great for coders. From my office worker slash YouTuber lifestyle, the MacBook Air is the easier generalist recommendation because it can do everything I need for far less money and is still one of the best computers ever made. The MacBook Pro 16 is amazing and it is my primary computer since I already bought it. If you need that power, go wild and get it. The thing is amazing. But both of these are actually great. And if you like this video and you are now a little more curious about either of these computers, good news. I'm going to leave you two videos right here that you can find that will go in a little more depth about both of them. You can find them by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.